So welcome to the BWIR. Welcome to the BWI uh, part one of three for the Unite technology and the newer extensions within the CREO 3 release uh, from PTC. We will be covering in the first part the Unite technology, uh, what it consists of and how it can benefit uh, your company efforts for uh, multi-CAD uh, environments that you might have. So when I first heard of the Unite technology and started to read about it and the anticipation of it in the release of Creo 3, what I thought of it was essentially a tab that you would get in the, uh, in, in the interface of Creo 3. But as I kind of researched and learned about it, what I found is that it is actually a collection of functions that you have the ability to do that support using third-party third party data or taking Creo parts and pushing them out as third-party data. A lot of us have SolidWorks, CATIA, and Venner files, SolidEdge files, and whether we have them, whether, we're, whether we are producing them in-house or whether we're actually getting them from suppliers or manufacturers or whoever it may be, we still have the need to want to uh, uh, manage those and deal with those in a way that doesn't cause us to buy those pieces of software. And so what Unite does is bring that idea together. It is a collection of functions and abilities that make this possible. So when you really start talking about what you are using or the idea around this, you really fall, uh, there, are, there are two buckets to this. Now, it is the consolidation bucket and the collaboration bucket, right? It doesn't necessarily mean, though, that you are one or the other. It just kind of depends what you are trying to accomplish with the data that you have. Now, from, from those, essentially, there is now a separation in between what is considered to be an import, what is considered to be an open, what updating means from third-party data, and we'll cover that a little bit later on, and then now the ability to save out as, as you see there, SOLIDWORKS files, uh, uh, Siemens NX files, and then also the CATIA formats. Now, here's a quick little brief explanation of import and open and the differences now, and we'll see this in live demo here in just a second, but the idea in import is where I have a uh, even a native format inventor file or the CATIA file, just like you see up here, and I actually convert them to a creo.prt or a creo.asm, where even though we had those other file types, right, just like an IGIS or a STEP, something like that, where we're now converting it into a native creo file. The open is different now because open actually opens SOLIDWORKS, NX and CATIA files and keeps those as or in their native format. So there is not that conversion part of it. What's nice about that, and this falls into the update portion of it, is because they are still in their native format, whether through assembly or just opening them natively, is that now if I had a supplier that sent me an updated part, that now will still maintain that tie and I will get the new geometry of that SOLIDWORKS part or again one of the other formats just by doing an update which you see down here and so import is conversion open is now keeping its native format alright when you start talking about consolidation what you're really talking about is converting data into native format now into native Creo format but that doesn't mean you have to do it all at one point in time. So if there are files that you know you're going to need immediately, that you know you're going to want to take and turn them into Creo formats and maybe uh, change them with some of the flexible modeling functionality that exists within the Creo software, is that you can import just about all of these files. Okay? So SOLIDWORKS, CATIA, 
NX, Inventor, Solid Edge, you can import those at any given time. And then for the files that, yeah, you want to use them within Creo, but you don't necessarily have to turn them into Creo files. They can stay the noted format. We might be getting rid of SolidWorks licenses, but we don't have to do this all at once. We don't, uh, we don't have to convert them. You still can use those. And so the differences become now this is that I have some SOLIDWORKS part or a SOLIDWORKS part and an inventor part. If I hit the open button, what you'll see is when I go in and look at one of those files, the SOLIDWORKS files, see how it now says open. Okay. If I go in and hit the, uh, the inventor part, notice how now there's an import. So what you're considering for open to be is open and it just opens it. Now, it looks fairly familiar to what you would see before in, in but import, but there's one screen that we're missing and out. You'll see that when we go back to Inventor. Also now, even though you see import feature, notice the illustration that you get uh, for that specific feature, which will be different from what you see for the Inventor part. So if I go back and we do a file open, and I look at the uh, Inventor part, Notice how it's an import. This, for those of you that have imported data before, is what you are more familiar with. You are converting it. You're using the tools within this software to actually change that data into data that now Creo can absorb. There it is. And again, notice the difference in the, uh, in the illustration that you get. So there is a true conversion of data during the import when open is just opening that file. It's the same thing in assembly. Now you can just assemble as the native format and because it stays in that native format, if you got an update for that file, you would be able to update it, which we'll show here in just a second. Okay. Let's go ahead and go to our PowerPoint. All right, so here we are. So the idea, consolidate, right? Convert data is needed. It gives us the ability to reuse legacy data because, again, some of that legacy data may be in other formats, so 2D and 3D with, again, minimal efforts because, again, we can just import or open. We don't need all those CAD platforms. We don't need CATIA seats and NX seats and, and SOLIDWORKS seats. We can get rid of those, get rid of the licensing, get rid of the maintenance costs when we now can use those. Even though we have them, we now can use them. Obviously, it makes engineering productivity much more easier. You're not always converting objects and repairing geometry, especially when we start talking about opening geometry, when we start opening parts and just using them in their native formats. All right. The other bucket that, again, could be a mixed environment, whether it's collaboration or consolidation, is the collaboration idea. Now, we've seen the open portion of it. So the open portion of it, SOLIDWORKS, NX, CATIA files, we hit the open button, it stays in its native format. The other part of this is the ability is that if you use it in its native format is to automatically update it if you were to get a newer version of that. So here's how that here's how it works. Let's go ahead and close all this down. And what I'm going to do is we are going to open up a assembly file and we are going to assemble as its native format a SOLIDWORKS file. So we'll just do an assemble. There's my SOLIDWORKS part. Right. We'll kind of drag it in somewhere close. Don't need to be too specific with this. Something about right there. Let's drag it in just a little bit. So we have our our, uh, our brake disc for this this wheel that we have. I'll say let's go ahead and just fix it into this position. There we are. Now, pretty straightforward. There's your part file, right? But notice the illustration that you have. Notice how it is still in its native format, right? Creo parts, uh, uh, Creo assemblies, and then our SolidWorks part. Now, what we'll do from here is that we are going to go to that file right here. We're going to go to, let's do it from here. Let's 
go find it here. There we are. So here is that SolidWorks part. What I'm going to do is I have a different part, right, same name that I have right here. So what I'm going to do is right click on this guy and just copy it. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to paste it here. So now that we know, and you can see this, you can see the size difference right here. Where is that at? There it is. There it is. We'll go ahead, same name, but paste in, copy and replace, and you can see different part. Obviously, you can't see it just yet, but different part, same name, but different part file. Now, what's nice about this is that in here, under the operations, you will see the ATB. And I'm going to make sure I hit show log. And what we'll do is say we want to check the status for all of these files. And what it says is, okay, I have seen that for this part, I now have the imported at this time, and now, or I shouldn't say import, but last brought in, that's more of the appropriate word, and now I have a new part at this, at this time. So here's the status that you have the ability to check, and when you go to the ATB, you can now say update that part. It'll update, and notice how now if a customer had sent me a new SOLIDWORKS file, same name, I just have to replace it in the folder, do an update, and those that part will now update with the current SOLIDWORKS data. And that's really what we're talking about is that you don't have to convert. You can use it as its native format, get new updated uh, revisions of it, versions of it, whatever it may be. And as you get them, if you're in a wind chill situation, then you just replace it within wind chill, and then obviously the it all comes with. But in a non-data management situation, you just replace it in the folder that you have, do an update, and then all of a sudden now you get the appropriate data that you want. Okay? So this is really now what it means to update. Update now within the, the consideration of the Unite technology. All right. The last one here that I'm going to show around the Unite technology is the concept of save as. Now, I left this for the end and, and for the back part of it because of this. Is that you see here that you have the ability, we know now, to import SOLIDWORKS, whether it's import or open, right? The importing and opening of NX, and same thing with Katia. But the ability to save out as, save out as, if take a pro e part, creo part, should say creo part, and open it as, or save it out as a SOLIDWORKS, an NX, or a Katia V4, V5, actually cost or, or require a paid or added on module. If you were to go into, for instance, if I have a part open, let's open one of our parts that we have here in our, uh, let's, let's say this guy. If you were in Creo 2, what you don't have the ability to do is under save as, go save a copy, and now in Creo 3 you will see a SOLIDWORKS part. And so now this becomes a native solid or not a native SOLIDWORKS part. And then at that point in time, SOLIDWORKS will be able to open that up directly. So it's now saving out as those are the added on extensions within the concept of Unite, and those are paid for. So in finishing, it the idea here is to be able to work with files that you might have that is legacy data files that you get from customers that you might be constantly working on, that you might be updating, and whether it's changing import data through the flexible modeling tools, whether it's opening natively, updating, or saving as out, saving out as now, what this Unite concept does is give you those abilities. So I'm excited for it. I know that uh, PTC, in talking to some of the PTC AEs in the next few months, they will be supporting this. This is not a beginning of uh, Creo 3 and it goes away. This is something that will be around for a while that PTC is going to support, they believe in, and it's something that I think will give PTC good capabilities in the future. So if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to us of the contacts you know, and we'll be glad to answer.